Hi guys and good morning. Today I am doing a video about adult level of consciousness, particularly about alert and oriented times four. We were recently doing a presentation about this and I realized there wasn't a lot of information about it on the internet, on YouTube or anything. There was alert and oriented times three, but there's no times four. So I wanted to put some information out there for anyone else who might be doing a project about this. Alert and oriented times four isn't the only assessment you can do to assess a patient's consciousness. There's also the Glasgow Coma Scale and AVPU which we won't be talking about today, but you can also go look those up. There's a lot of information out there about those. Essentially, adult level of consciousness is how well a person responds to external stimuli. So that could be pain or it could be someone speaking to them, but it's how well on what level uh, they're responding to that stimulus. Alert and oriented times four is a really quick way to assess a patient's responsiveness. So when you hear someone say that person is alert and oriented, what does that mean exactly? Well, alert and oriented times one would be their awareness of themselves. So you would ask them, do you know your name? Do you know who you are? Their awareness times two would be their knowledge of the place. So do you know where you are? Alert and oriented times three would be their awareness of the time. Do you know what today is? or what year it is, if it's a really extreme case. And alert and oriented times four would be if they had all three of those, plus if they actually remember what happened to them. So I was in a car accident or I fell off my bike when I was mountain biking, something like that. Do you know what happened to you is, is what you would ask the patient. Healthcare providers like to use alert and oriented times four because it's a really quick way to gather information and it's also a really quick way to pass off that information to your coworkers. But because it's so quick, it could lead you to miss some details in what the people are saying or how they're acting. They may be alert, but they might not be totally there. They might be confused. There are also some external factors that could alter the results of the assessment. Some really quick mnemonics that we learn to remember what kind of external factors can alter the results of an assessment can be made into AEIOU. So it could stand for alcohol, epilepsy, insulin for diabetes, overdose or underdose. And there's also TIPS, T-I-P-S, which could be trauma, injury, uh, psychiatric disorders, and shock. So as a healthcare provider, you should always remember the golden rule that any altered level of consciousness is indicative of some underlying disorder and should always warrant a thorough assessment. So don't forget that if someone's confused or they're not sure where they are, you should always do a thorough assessment to rule out, to rule out things like a blood clot or a stroke or a shock or Maybe their insulin levels are low. You never know. It, it may not just be related to the accident that they come in for. So that's actually it for today's video. I hope you guys found this helpful if you're doing any presentations about level of consciousness in adults. Um, let me know if you'd like me to do a video on AVPU or the Glasgow Coma Scale. I'll be doing a couple more videos in the next couple weeks. So if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you hopefully next week, guys. Bye.